lot of people are asking this question about why we should care about intergenerational gaming. Like, why do we think it's a, a real space of possibility to do, do some work around as designers and as educators? Um, and if you look at the history of gaming, games were always intergenerational. If you look at the history of sport, always intergenerational. The notion of, of parents and siblings and grandparents and aunts and uncles and other kinds of caregivers uh, playing together and interacting together as a way to build social capital, um, as a way to learn, learn things about a culture, for example, is a way to kind of swap stories, exchange information. So we know there's a rich history, um, and now the question is how might we bring that rich history into the space of digital gaming, um, which has sort of in some sense moved away from that history because parents have become very scared of games um, for, for a lot of different reasons. I'm always excited when game designers get to come into a space of cognitive scientists and development, developmental psychologists and educators and people who know a lot about market research. So I think it's a great um, opportunity to build a model around how games going forward could be designed and built. So the work that we're doing um, at the Institute of Play is broadly in this area of games and learning. So we're, we're always excited and fascinated and interested in working with people that are, that are working in that same space. Um, and certainly uh, some of the projects that we're working on need to begin to look at how we bring parents into the space of play with kids. So this would, this would help kind of build research and knowledge around what, what are the conditions to make that happen.